Well, hello, this is me again. Today is November 9th, 2024. It is Saturday, and um, I decided why not to spoil somebody's weekend and pour some cold water on them. No, I'm joking. So, and uh, <clears throat> we will start with uh, obviously events which are unfolding in terms of. Uh, basically very convincing victory by Mr. Donald J. Trump. And some people say that it's the new era maybe unfolding. Well, maybe. And this is, for example, why I uh, went out and uh, my family, essentially, all of us, we voted for Donald Trump. And here's why. I uh, already Yahoo News and other news um, outlets in the United States begin to you know, publish all kinds of the plans by possible plans by Mr. Trump. So before I go in and discuss those things, I want to stress again what I stress all the time. These are American media. These are people and from top bottom, from chief editors down to simple, you know, reporter, they do not have any kind of integrity, honor, or honesty in them. So whatever they say may not necessarily be true. And they have been caught, as you all know, on lies all the time, especially the big corporate media and some like New York Times or Washington Post. And they continue to do that. They continue to lie through their teeth. And but let's take a look what Mr. Trump in, indeed, as they say, you know, wants to start with. Here we have this uh, situation. Uh, Yahoo News reports. I don't know who David Knowles is, but here it is. Uh, here's what Trump said he will do immediately once he becomes president. <clears throat> and that's correct. Many people uh, discuss the situation that he will probably will have the stack of the uh, papers of the executive orders, which he will actually try to enact. And so he says that President-elect Donald Trump has laid out an ambitious agenda that he has promised will go into effect on January 20, the day he will be sworn into the office on his second term. And uh, while some of Trump's policy proposals, such as cutting corporate taxes, will require an assist from Congress in the form of passing new legislation that could take months to complete, others will simply require the stroke of a pen. Yeah, executive order. Let's take a look uh, what he uh, will be essentially uh, proposing. And here we have this. Uh, this is by far not all the least, but, but, um, Trump repeatedly attacked Harris during the campaign over her support of transgender rights. Uh, well, yeah, transgender rights, it's uh, the whole other story altogether. But Trump also promised to immediately sign an executive order that would ban federal funding for gender affirming care deemed necessary through programs and agencies like Medicare, the Veterans Health Administration, the Department of Defense, TRICARE, and the State Children's Health Insurance Program. We know that Democrats, uh, <clears throat> especially through the Democratic National Committee, developed ideologies which go through well. If you look at answer that the Democrat, Democratic Party, it is Obama's party essentially, not even Biden's. They in establish this essentially crimes, crime against humanity and abuse of children officially in the United States. And if Trump wipes this out and stops it, including the, whatever the DEI uh, uh, insanity is, that would be good. And that's why we actually voted for him. But of course, these are more, how to say it, you know, um, public relations, uh, in a good sense, public relations uh, issues, but they need to be addressed. And of course, <clears throat> we'll see how he will do that. I agree with him. Immigration and mass deportation of migrants. On the campaign trail, so he talks about that means rounding up housing and removing up to 20 million people, many of them migrants who are in the country illegally. So and it, he wants to launch in the largest mass deportation operation of illegal immigrants that Kamala Harris has allowed into this country. He stated it. So <clears throat> I agree. There are states, nation states are defined first and foremost by their borders. If you are illegally in the country, you must leave. Period. Simple as that. And this has to stop because United States, well, is a whole other story. And 
once I'll bring this up, although I wrote a number of times, including in my books uh, openly, I still will be, uh, you know what, assaulted and accused of being racist or, you know, what, some kind of fascist or Hitler. No, I'm just merely the guy who, well, because of my background, I always served the state. I always served the nation and the Soviet Union. Now I'm U.S. a citizen for a long time now. And you know what? I view United States as my home. And I really care about who and how gets into this country, especially when we talk about the uh, gangs and traffic of uh, drug, drug trafficking and things like that. Uh, it doesn't mean that all of those uh, people are necessarily uh, bad people. I'm talking about illegal migrants. But there is a, a larger interest of the nation if we view United States as the nation which has to exist within its borders. Borders are essentially what defines, you know, the nation state since the, you know, uh, 1648. The Treaty of Westphalia, you know, the borders, the, you know, uh, what is called the um, uh, pool ball uh, uh, country or nation. So hard things. This is one of the prerequisites. So if he does it, great. So and said, then he talks about the drilling, which is fine. I mean, I have no problems with it. With he restarts drilling or for the oil in the United States. But but and this is all f good and fine and dandy. Make no mistake. And uh, that's why we elected Mr. Trump. But the cold water comes through this. Let's start with uh, and again. Take it with the uh, grain of salt. But we know that uh, actually that was the idea. And here we have this. This is the hill. And look at this. So the hill says that today, as you can see yourself, which is actually correct. I think so. This one does merit uh, our trust. And it, they say that Trump looks to woo and divide Putin, Xi and Kim. President elect Trump is expected to deploy his trademark mix of belligerent threats and friendly relations with some of the world's dictators. Okay, so Putin is dictator now. Okay, so that, that's not a good start. And, but then again, you, you know, uh, as I already stated, the people who write for uh, work for US media are basically brainwashed creeps. And so they believe this BS about dictators and things like that. As he seeks to break uh, up the deepening partnership between US adversaries, China, Russia, Iran and North Korea and <clears throat> first we already know that obviously Iran suddenly has been um, accused of uh, uh, basically plotting to kill Mr. Trump which is of course complete garbage but you know what we know that in his administration you will encounter many people who hate Iran you know hate Iranian guts and yeah but the point is and here comes this most fundamental thing in order to you to woo or you know, threat somebody, you need to have wherewithal. You know, you need to have their uh, basically resources. And here comes this funny thing. United States could do that 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, we're the finest fighting force in the history. You know, we'll just, if you don't do this, we'll attack you. United States cannot attack anybody. Except for, of course, yeah, the third world, very poor, uh, underdeveloped country. The United States cannot attack Iran let alone attack Russia or China. That will mean the end of the United States. So, and uh, when we look intensively militarily, this whole thing of the Ukrainian conflict or special military operation is actually hanging over Mr. Trump's head, if you wish. And he promised that he will stop it in 24 hours. He will do no such thing, obviously, despite the fact of many, well, seemingly uh, peaceful, you know, um, uh, statements by not only from him, but J.D. Vance as his vice president. So uh, if you go to the negotiating table, uh, you have to bring something to it. So if you think so that Trump goes to a negotiating table, let alone with Mr. Putin and starts threatening him or starts trying to enchant him, a uh, wrong candidacy for doing this. I mean, Russia has never be, been as strong as she is today. And for people who probably do not know, Russia has much greater military and economic potential than even during the Soviet times. Why this happened so? Well, as I already stated, uh, many people who were in charge of the intelligence uh, uh, services in the United States and who 
basically we're supposed to provide appropriate assessment, not that it will help, obviously, when we look attentively at the Biden administration and those Democrats and neocons who are running uh, and were running it, uh, they still wouldn't understand even the appropriate assessment, which would tell them that you are dealing with superpower, guys, not only nuclear superpower, it's economic superpower, and it commands a dramatic, colossal respect in the world. And it is us, the combined West, who are actually isolated. Trump should understand this. He is not a stupid man by any means. He is very narcissistic. He is very impulsive. But he should understand that. In this case, whenever he goes and tries, for example, to split China and Russia, uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, because obviously the whole idea, as they say that uh, Bloomberg says that, you know what, uh, Trump already kind of begins to reshape the uh, foreign policy. And uh, I don't know, it's just so stupid because le let's wait and see what's going to happen. OK, and so when you go to even time. Time magazine, well, it, 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 it's another rag, it's another tabloid, it's another collection of this uh, journal her herpes who do not know what they're writing about. But here they are, Spin Masters. Look at this. Uh, it was on November 7th, day before yesterday, and they talk about that Putin plays stuff and opening move with Trump. Vladimir Putin did not come running. He let his spokesman, well, Mr. Peskov, react on Wednesday to an outcome U.S. presidential race, proclaiming that the Kremlin has no plans to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory and indeed officially there was no congratulation if anybody asks oh, but putin did congratulate him yes he did but he did it in the unofficial capacity as the spokesperson essentially on the Valdai uh, discussion club and he kind of mentioned it. It was not specifically addressed in a very formal uh, manner that you know what Mr. President-elect we congratulate you and hope for the development of this blah 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 relations. No, he just mentioned that yeah he is a uh, he always said that Trump was a bright, bright not only mentally, bright in terms of the outward appearances. Man, as a showman, that's what he meant when he talked about him. But I mean, uh, Russia, yeah, as Mr. Ripkov, the first deputy foreign minister of Russia today stated that, yeah, sure, if Mr. Trump wants to end the war, and this is Ripkov, and you have to read it in Russian to understand actually sarcastic tone of this. Let him prepare the proposal, and we in Moscow will see if we need to respond to it. There you go. This is essentially first, it's not the slap in the face, but this is a signal that <clears throat> Moscow have no delusions about uh, new Trump administration uh, intentions. And when you begin to look attentively at uh, what is uh, happening with around possible Trump administration and appointments, uh, some uh, American media say, oh my God, you know, he will uh, get some loyalists. Of course, he should get loyalists. Nobody says that he shouldn't. The, it's actually that's how you form your uh, basically coterie, if you wish, your from your court of power. And uh, uh, but again, as I already stated, th those uh, appoint well candidates or candidates uh, which were supposed to, for example, take uh, power over uh, State Department, Tom Cotton, Marco Rubio, forget it, man. Once they if it comes true, for now we know about Richard Grenell, uh, he's loyalist, but in terms of uh, his view, political views or foreign policy views, he is a hack and he is aggressive hack. So the same goes, for example, if we see Mike Pompeo, who becomes the um, chief of, you know, the secretary of defense. If that happens, you can easily rewrite uh, Trump administration off as the administration which wants to calm things down. Pompeo, he is the neocon's neocon. He is very aggressive due to being not very bright and not very educated. But, but here's the issue. 
Trump remains, no matter what we talk about him. Or we admire Baron Trump, who grows up to be a wonderful young man, and you can see yourself the combination of the class and intellect on his face. Or we may admire, adore First Lady Melania Trump, who is the most beautiful uh, person who ever uh, graced the White House, not to speak about the fact that she is an absolute concentrated expression of the class and and elegance and she is just absolutely amazing i mean she commands the respect and adoration among many russians you know she is oh my god many people cannot even understand how important it is she is not just ornament she is not just the beautiful figure but having said that and having for example personal sympathies especially to trump family when you look at them we have to keep in mind mr trump is american militarist and exceptionalist Another matter that, as they say, oh yeah, there are the changes in the foreign policy. Well, the changes of the foreign policy will be merely shifting a little bit focus from Europe, maybe, towards China. And China knows that the United States is basically, you know, honing its word uh, against it. In this particular case, China relies heavily, very heavily, on Russia. And so if that will be the change of the focus, it doesn't change the equation whatsoever. That is why Russia and China are in this type of the relations, because in the end, the United States wants to kill China. Wrongly, uh, assuming that uh, China is their competitor. China is not competitor to the United States. China already won the competition. It's just a matter of people in the United States and Washington admitting that everything they told about the American economy, everything they told uh, about American society is basically baloney. They never knew their own society. They don't care about the fate of the hundreds of millions of regular Americans who do not have fat 401ks and huge uh, savings accounts and don't, have, uh, don't own personal yachts and Bugattis. They don't know that America, which is not there, which is absolutely hardworking, working, you know, what, nine to five, sometimes six to uh, three uh, jobs. They don't care about this America. And so what do you want? If we are talking about some totally uh, uh, detached from the reality uh, uh, Washington elite, which wants to tame China, good luck with that. And here comes the other thing that militarily United States is not there. It doesn't have resources. It doesn't have ta table of organization and equipment. And that is why when we uh, talk about, for example, <clears throat> Mr. Pompeo becoming uh, the chief of in Pentagon. For example, I'm I'm not saying that it will necessarily happen. We'll have to wait and see. Albeit, okay, his uh, name was floating and still continues to float around there. The issue here is he doesn't understand really. I don't think so. He doesn't have toolkit to understand what is happening because United States. I quote myself. You can actually put those words in granite. United States lost the arms race. And to close the gap uh, with, the, with Russia, for example, on the modern weapon systems, it's just absolutely impossible at this stage and might take decades, if at all. And so this has to be kept in mind. And when we talk about this, uh, yeah, maybe some changes. But in foreign policy, for average American, it is very difficult to come to average working class American guy or girl and say, dude, you have to understand what is happening to you and your family is related directly to the American foreign policy. As some people say in the most, you know, what uh, tame, uh, tamed manner that, oh, yeah, the United States is overstretched. It's not overstretched. It's bankrupt and it's bankrupt militarily and economically. And that is why we elected Mr. Trump, hoping that he may prevent a complete collapse if we would have elected, uh, God forbid, Kamala Harris. That would have been the end of the United States as we know it. So that is why, uh, as I'm already stated, I am very, uh, I'm very glad that Mr. Trump uh, won, but I do not expect any considerable changes in the foreign policy. 
and especially in his ideas, which, by the way, the heel talks about that he wants Wu and divide and rule. Yeah, that's what he wants. That's what he uh, was claiming in his first term, which was completely sabotaged due to him uh, appointing people who hated him and they betrayed him. Will he do better today? I don't know. So, but evidently, I mean, we'll see, you know, it's too early. But again, as I already stated, he will not be able to finish the uh, war or special interpretation in 24 hours. All those ideas floating around, maybe part of them, a complete, uh, you know, product of imagination of this, uh, you know, what, dirty American media. But, but if we go now and um, take a look at what is happening, as you saw yourself in the beginning, you know, the... Uh, what Ukraine has is just basically, you know, it's the some personnel which try to hide in, um, for example, Kharkov, Kharkov area. If they try to find uh, to to hide, doesn't matter. They will be found out and eliminated uh, by the drone, by artillery. Doesn't matter. Well, to understand why, for example, uh, Ukrainians uh, hate the fact that Mr. Trump was uh, elected, I'm not kidding you, this is not, uh, uh, you know what, it's uh, somewhere in Ukraine, on, and this is says that it's a collection of the money to kill Trump. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be fake, but I don't think so, considering the fact who those people are, you can definitely uh, imagine that in Ukraine, they, yeah, they would do that, so. Uh, but but we need to go and take a look at the uh, situation on the battlefields of uh, uh, former Ukraine. And we will start with uh, obviously this thing. So as you can see yourself, it continues November 8, uh, uh, 2190 uh, of the uh, personnel killed there. So we have 24 tanks and APCs, 27 armored vehicles. I mean the slaughter all across the uh, uh, front line. And um, as uh, Colonel uh, Lawrence Wilkerson today uh, or yesterday stated on Judge Napolitano, the only thing they have to do is to, you know, basically g give up and run away, you know. So and that's what is kind of happening there a little bit now. And uh, if you take a look at now at Silidova, as you can see yourself, uh, this is uh, <coughs> from the uh, two days ago. This is Marat's, uh, our Marat Harulin's uh, map. As you can see yourself, front moving inexorably towards uh, basically being even. That's what Russians will do. They will even the front line. Remember, I'm talking about it nonstop. Operational Art 101. And you can see yourself those red arrows smaller red arrows but they are everywhere and they essentially create you know much larger red arrow and then we, we take a look at Kurahova, where the uh, evening on the front line is happening and as you can see yourself russians are already in Kurahova, but what they will do uh, on this um essentially 17 uh kilometer deep uh uh, well, uh, uh, bulge, if you wish, uh, they will cut it off. As you can see yourself, everything tells you about it. If you take a look at at how it is going there, and yeah, once they close this thing, well, Kurahova will be liberated, and we will have another just horrendous number of the uh, KIAs on the armed forces of Ukraine. And uh, just to demonstrate to you, so what is happening there for people to understand why the events are of such scale. Let's take a look at what Mr. Putin actually uh, stated uh, uh, about the uh, uh, Kursk area, which of course is a very important uh, uh, event. And uh, we will, uh, let me see where that uh, thing is. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Here it is. And here's Mr. Putin talking about Kursk on two days ago. So, and uh, he talks, the president of Russia explained that in the Kursk region, the armed forces of Ukraine lost more in three months of fighting than in the entire last year. <clears throat> more than 30,000 people killed. It's killed. We're talking about, as I already stated, 14 brigades wiped out of the battle of order. And he talks about why they did this. <clears throat> This whole adventure was ordered from across the ocean at any cost 
at any cost to hold out at least until the election to show that all the efforts of the democratic administration, the administration of the democratic party in Kyiv direction, in the Ukrainian direction were not in vain. And so, uh, as I already stated, it was American operation planned for the political expediency of the Democratic National Committee and for the possible election of the Kamala Harris to show some degree of the success in uh, Kursk area. Well, uh, even lying sack of uh, excrement, Washington Post, they talk about that what is happening in Kursk and, and so <clears throat> But the fight for Kursk remains intense. They're talking about this uh, today. Uh, and times downright terrifying for Ukrainians as well. In the hospital in the Sumer region, men evacuated in recent days lay in beds with their legs and arms bandaged, describing hellish conditions inside Kursk. Not Kursk, but Kursk area, obviously. Uh, all of the men appeared to be shell-shocked and in the disbelief that they had survived. And so they begin to go into this uh, typical, you know, the personal stories. And yeah, they're, they're horrifying stories. But just to demonstrate to you, if you uh, wonder what is happening there today, through special, uh, you know, co contacts, uh, Russians and Ukrainians exchange their KIAs, which have been actually picked up from, from the battlefield recently. And... Uh, Russians, return, Russians received about 37, I believe, bodies of their servicemen. Ukraine was given 683. That tells you, so if anybody wants to deal with the uh, basically combat statistics, you are more than welcome to get, you know, what <laughs> calculate, divide 683 by 37. And that's where you will get approximate uh, uh, kill uh, ratio in favor of Russia. This is uh, one of those uh, circumstantial but very powerful evidence of what I've been online uh, on talking for a long time. And yeah, when you kill uh, 42 brigades, let me demonstrate to you if you have to understand, you know, to get it somehow into some, you know, historical perspective. Here is the um, Battle of Iwo Jima. So here we have this Battle of Iwo Jima. As you can see yourself, the World War II National War Museum in New Orleans. Look at this. So the Battle of Iwo Jima was actually approximately 70,000 U.S. Marines and 18,000 Japanese soldiers took part in the battle. In 36 days of fighting on the island, nearly 7,000 U.S. Marines were killed, another 20,000 were wounded. Marines captured well. So, and as you can see yourself, uh, uh, that's the toll, and this is obviously very famous uh, photo of uh, Marines, you know, uh, hoisting the U.S. flag over the captured uh, uh, Iwo Jima. But the point is, think about it. Seven thousand Marines were killed in um, uh, 35 days. So Kursk alone, as Mr. Putin already stated, in it's less than three months. It's uh, six August, uh, uh, September, October. Well, yeah, it's uh, three months now. Uh, Thirty thousand killed, and that's only what Russians can calculate. The, the bulk of wounded. This is slightly larger area, well, considerably large, but still small area in which they invaded. And compare this to the Battle of Iwo Jima, you will get approximately the numerical value, so to speak, the coefficient. And don't forget, this is just a small part of the 800 mile long front line. And this is happening every day. Every day you basically kill about 2,000 Armed for, uh, personnel of the Ukrainian armed forces. So, and uh, if you look, uh, take a look attentively now at the cemeteries, the whole Ukraine now is sprinkled with those cemeteries and they hold thousands upon thousands killed Ukrainians. This is the price they paid for Democratic National Committee, for Obama, and for those criminals who wanted the, uh, Kamala Harris to be reelected. So, and this includes uh, U.S. media. And this is, in, in, in a shell, you know, to speak, you know, in a nutshell, if you wish, uh, 
uh, summary of Biden administration, which still may yet create some kind of the extremity or situation to not allow Mr. Trump into the White uh, uh, House, because at least Trump in this respect, for all his failures, he stated one thing which was critical. He said that killing must stop, but killing will stop only on Russian conditions. And the, fa the faster they understand that in the upcoming uh, administration of Mr. D uh, Trump, the better it will be for everybody, including for the United States, whose reputation have been completely wiped out in Ukraine. And this is the, so to speak, part of the cold water I wanted to pour on your expectation, but, but it is still hopeful. Let's wait and see what's going to happen, and then we'll make our conclusions finally. So, and this is what I wanted to tell you today for your uh, weekend. So I spoiled it, I guess. So, and as always, guys, those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And those who can afford, please support me on the Patreon or buy me a coffee too. And I also have a weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.